Coming up next, it's the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Television. We've got an exclusive interview with TNA superstar Kurt Angle. Be the booker for WWE bragging rights, 10 best viewer mail, fan of the week, and discussion on this past Monday's WWE Raw and more. This is the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. And now, celebrating 13 years on the air, this is the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time with David Hero, Frank Cosentino, Linda Kay, the man they call Meathead, and Damian Nelson. All the latest from World Wrestling Entertainment, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, and more. This is the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. Kurt Angle, welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report. Thanks for having me on, guys. Anytime, Kurt. It's been a wild last couple of weeks for you, coming off of Bound for Glory, and then Jeff Jarrett uh, taking you out last Thursday on Impact. Give us a little bit of a story as to what is going on in your wrestling life right now, given the fact that you made that statement that if you did not win at Bound for Glory, you would retire. I yeah I I said that I would retire if I didn't win and um, you know with everything that went on and obviously Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff getting involved in the finish um, you know I I didn't win so I was going to state my retirement um, last Thursday and uh, but I wanted to have a discussion with Bischoff and Hogan who mm -hmm. would not talk to me so. I looked at it as if they didn't want to talk to me and give me an answer why they did what they did at Bound for Glory, then I looked at it as, yeah, I didn't win the title, but I didn't necessarily get pinned either, so I didn't lose. Um, so I kind of decided that maybe I won't retire. Uh, unfortunately, I got in a situation, uh, a little bit of an argument with Jeff Jarrett, and I uh, was jumped by a few security guards and... I got handcuffed and uh, thrown uh, headfirst through a wall, and I I injured my neck, my elbow, and also my ribs. So oh. I don't know where I'm going to go from here. Um, I was considering retiring if I lost, and also for my own health issues. But uh, right now I'm going to be uh, probably coasting a little bit and not going that much on TV uh but I don't think I'm going to retire yet. Not not right now, especially after what Jeff did to me. Well, ex you know, exactly. Right now, wrestling needs you. I mean, with Hulk Hogan and his group of, what, 15 or 20, <laughs> you know, uh, merry men that he has right now. I mean, right now is the perfect time for Kurt Angle to take some of these younger baby faces under his wing and, uh, you know, fight the good fight, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, the, 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 you know, our, our show's getting a little bit... Um, uh, you know, it, I guess uh, radical. It's uh, you know, there's a lot of the, lot of the, the heels are they're, they're, we're very heel heavy right now. Yeah, and, uh, just a little. You know, <laughs> yeah, and I'm the I'm the top guy there. So, you know, being uh, you know, out with injury right now and uh, looking around, there isn't a real lot to you know to go with right now. So I know the Pope's there and Anderson's there and RVD and. You know, Joe. I know they'll do a good job, but uh, don't count me out completely. But, you know, I I know that my body is only capable of doing what it can do right now. Um, I've been going really, really hard for TNA for the last four years. So uh, this is kind of uh, probably a good time for me to take a little bit of a break without, you know, I'll be on TV and here and there, but I don't think I'll be wrestling that much. And Kurt, as we said before, you know, best wrestler in the world today that's not something that should be sneezed at, obviously, but you put yourself through, I'll just say it, hell to deliver the amount of action and athleticism and pure wrestling ability out there. It, it just has to really take a substantial toll on your body over the course, as you said, going nonstop for the last four years. Granted, a shorter schedule in TNA than in WWE, but it's just fascinating to watch you perform and, and wrestle and just wonder what toll is it well, taking on your body Damien, long term. Those swantons from Jeff Hardy are brutal. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how Kurt keeps taking those every week. <laughs> I yeah, well I dislocated my ribs at uh, no surrender and I re dislocated them again. Uh this time they couldn't pop them back in at uh Bound for Glory. 
Um, yeah, I took a swanton uh, from the top of the rope outside on the cement floor from Jeff, and I think I caught every pound that he had right on my right on my uh, my ribs and my stomach. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, I um, if I can't wrestle the way I do, um, I, I don't really know how to slow down. Right. I have to go 200%. Um, if I can't do that, then I probably won't wrestle. I just... Uh, that's how I've always been. I've been very intense, and uh, um, if I can't deliver that kind of performance, and that's what I get paid to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I get paid very well to put on the best matches every time, and it's my responsibility to do that. So um, I have to keep up that intensity, and, you know, a lot of people tell me, you know, slow down, save it. Uh, I, I really don't know how to do that. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever will learn. T- TNA overall, obviously the company saw success with Bound for Glory, success with that big live impact the week before. Obviously, really with this Jeff Hardy thing, Hulk Hogan, Jeff Jarrett, Dixie Carter, a lot going on in the company right now. Uh, the state of affairs in TNA as you see them, Kurt Angle, what would you say? I'd say right now uh, we have the best talent roster, uh, even better than WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a matter of connecting the dots. Uh, you know, we got so many great young guys that, you know, need that extra shove. And, um, you know, it's really up to the veterans to help do that. There's a really big generation gap between the two. You know, I'll give you an example is, um, you know, you have Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan still, you know, not really that active, but they're, right. you know, staying in Kevin Nash, who are in their 50s. Um, you know, Jeff Jarrett's up there in the late 40s. Um, myself, I am, I'm 41, but I'm, I'm probably the um, youngest of the old group. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, then it breaks, and then, you know, the talent beneath us, you know, there, there aren't that many guys that, uh, that are at that main event level. Right. Uh, you know, AJ Styles is one uh, that I'm saying that, are, that is completely TNA homegrown talent. Mm-hmm. So it's really uh, up to us to, before we bow out is to really make these guys into big stars. And they got to do it themselves, too. But um, you're going to start seeing a lot of newer, fresh talent this next year step up because, um, you know, it's time for some of the guys to um, bow out and retire. And yeah. and um, it's time to make new talent. You know, I even watched the other, the other company, and <clears throat> I, I don't know 98% of the roster anymore when I, if I watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I, I think they, they are kind of in a, in a position as well. Yeah. Of course, we're in a better position because we still do have the older talent staying active. A lot of their talent has left. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's mainly John Cena, John Cena, and John Cena. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's something you don't want to have. And that's something I, I definitely don't want to carry on my shoulders is, you know, Kurt Angle having to perform every TV and every pay-per-view right. and having to put on the best match of the night every single time. Yeah. Um, I don't want I don't want that to happen because then the company will rely solely on me. Um, it has for some time, but mm-hmm. now we're starting to see younger guys stepping up, which is a good sign. You know, um, um, Kurt, last week, <clears throat> um, big sexy Kevin Nash and TNA couldn't come to a, a new contract. What is a guy like him when he is no longer in the locker room? You know, d- um, what, what does that do for the growth of uh, some of these young guys where they could go to him or they could go to you and say, hey, what do you think about this? Kevin is really smart. Um, you know, it's not all about money with Kevin. He um, he really understands the business. Mm-hmm. If I were um, anybody that was starting a promotion and I need someone to book the show, uh, I'd have Kevin do it. Um, he is very intelligent. Um, he knows the business. He knows he knows how to how to make the fans flock in. Uh, he's done it when he did the NWO. He he did it when he was up in WWE. He actually he works harder now, and he's fifty two years old, fifty three years old. He works harder now than he did when he was younger because he still wants to prove to himself and everybody else that he can still go. Yeah. And I respect that about Kevin, but so know that Kevin's near the end of his career and uh, he does have a lot of knowledge and it's very important to keep a guy like Kevin around because he does not get over. He does know how to 
Um, you know, uh, he, he, he knows what the fans want. He knows how to do it. I, I, I don't think I've ever met anyone that understood the business, especially a big cat, you know, like Kevin that understood the business and knows what needs to be told. Um, so I'd really love to have Kevin around for another year or two to help the younger guys. And they know they can go to him. And he's, um, you know, sometimes he gets a little erratic and, <laughs> you know, might speak his mind too much. Yeah. But that's Kevin Nash, and that that's the beauty of him. But uh, I, I give him a lot of credit. I've, I've learned a lot from Kevin. And, uh, you know, he's, um, he's always said from the beginning, you know, get the ball to Kurt. Give the ball to Kurt. Keep giving the ball to Kurt until we can't go anymore. And uh, and uh, I respect that from him. But you know, I'm getting to the point where <laughs> I don't necessarily want the ball right now. So um, you know, I do what I can, and I and I do as hard as I. But uh, you know, you can only go so so long, so hard before you. And and that's where I that's where I am right now. I probably do need a little bit of a break before I come back. TNA Impact Thursday nights on Spike TV, followed by TNA Reaction. Kurt Angle, thank you very much for joining us here on the Pro Wrestling Report. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for having me on, guys. This week's viewer mail comes from Thomas Dory. Thomas says, I used to be a big TNA fan until Hogan and Bischoff showed up. Now I don't even watch TNA anymore because week after week it just seems like a bad rerun of WCW. What do you guys think about the change in TNA and do you think it's good or bad for the company? Now let's take it over to our analysts, Damian Nelson and David Hero. Well, David Hero coming off the heels of that discussion conversation with Kurt Angle earlier in this episode. By the way, you get part two of that on this uh, week's ESPN radio show. And uh, Kurt's going to talk about the X Division, going to talk more about Hulk Hogan, going to talk about a lot of other stuff, including Angle Foods and his movies, all coming up this week on our ESPN radio show. But this viewer mail comes from Thomas Doherty talking about Hogan. Basically, has the uh, change been good or bad for the company in TNA? And, you know... If you look at recent history over the last three weeks, I guess it's been good. Everything leading up to that, I guess it's been okay. January 4th, certainly good. A couple weeks after that, good. Bad decision in March to go Monday nights head to head with Raw. So it's been sort of in between and ebbing and flowing as it pertains to Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff's impact on TNA. You know what my real question is? Is Thomas Story related to the Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty? I am not familiar with that term. You've never seen the Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty, wrestle? No. On Wrestling Challenge or Wrestling Superstars back in the day? Remember, you're older than me. Oh, that's right. Go with the old jokes. I'm just saying. I, mean, I got you, more hair. I can't be that much older. Being bald is a symbol of wisdom. I thought gray hair was a symbol of wisdom. You gonna answer the question? It's a nice little Hulk Hogan shirt there. Hey, you know what? It's nice, but you really can't... What? You, what it's, like, it's so subtle. Those are pythons, baby. Oh. See, I am. We had a great weekend with TNA. That we did. Okay. And I, and, 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 and I was chat, chatting with Abyss, and he has convinced me to join they. I'm just showing my support. He convinced you to stop wearing a collared shirt? Yeah. You didn't read the notes for season 13? He's you know, trying to look a little professional here. I Sitting there in a t shirt? I didn't get that. This was, an of course ex you this was expensive. It's attached to the Come TPS on. report. TPS. Mm -hmm. No idea what that means. Has the change been good or bad for the company? <laughs> you know what? It hasn't hurt. I mean, the ratings have gone up slightly. Uh -huh. I mean, it can't be all bad having Hulk Hogan there. Eric Bischoff, that's a different story. He rubs people the wrong way. But, uh... Especially Democrats. Yes. And Jeff Lynn. Well, that's, a a, that's a different story. Yes, he is. But, uh... Great guy. Yeah. He's tremendous. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, there's more ratings. A few more people know about TNA. Hulk Hogan's there. He'll give them a few more interviews. But, yeah, it's good for it. Is it a bad rerun of WCW? No. Because I think that the entering talent is better than what WCW had. Mm, okay. I'll give you that. Uh, but I would say, though, by sheer volume, WCW probably had them beat for a good number of years early on. 
Because they had the cruiserweights, they had a lot of okay, younger talents that were Does good. anybody ever say it's a bad repeat of the good WCW? No. Mm. They're saying it's the dying days of WCW. Back when the uh, New Blood was reborn, or WCW was reborn, was that a April of 2000? Yeah, that was bad. That was the construction of the coffin. It really was. It was. It, it was, was a great nitro, though. It was not good TV. No, it wasn't. That particular episode, when Bischoff came back and he was in the ring with Russo, and I mean, it, it had a moment feeling to it. Okay. I, nah, not for me. I, 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 I've never had a moment with Bischoff or Russo. Thank you, Thomas, for that email. Thank you, Linda, as well. And now it's time, David Hero, to go and see what the cause has on his mind this week. And uh, Are you serious? Well, he's trying to change wrestling for the better. So now, ladies and gentlemen, the cause. Welcome to this week's Cause 5. Yes, this is about making wrestling better. Things that piss you off in the world of professional wrestling, whether it's TNA or WWE, or the lady at the Taco Bell drive through that always gets your order wrong. That pisses me off. We want to make wrestling better, so each week we're going to put a poll up, list some things, and you're going to vote on it. And this week's winner is Jay Wow being on TNA. Yes, there's no reason for Jay Wow to be on TNA at all. Ruins the show. Jersey Shore, Snooky, Snooky Lumps, whatever it is. It's crap. There's no need for it. That pissed me off. That pissed the majority of you off. Next week, we're going to have a new poll up. Make wrestling better. That's what we're here for. And that's how I'm going to help. That's this week's Cop, uh, Cause 5. Check it out next week on PWRShow.com. Have a great week. Welcome back. Another edition of WCW 10 Best. Number 3. This has been an amazing list. So far, WCW 10 Best Moments, number three, July again. Bash at the Beach again, but it's the year 2000 now. We're talking Jeff Jarrett, Booker T, Hulk Hogan, and Vince Russo. Hulk Hogan was scheduled to have a match against Jeff Jarrett for the WCW Heavyweight Championship of the World. Lots of backstage turmoil going on before this pay-per-view. Hogan makes his way to the ring. Jarrett makes his way to the ring. Jarrett lays down, Hogan pins, one, two, three. Hogan walks off with the WCW Memorial Belt, as Vince Russo calls it, and proceeds to cut a profanity-laced promo on Hulk Hogan and how the boys in the back never get a chance, how he was going to play his um, booking card, if you will. He was going to play his uh, you know, character involvement Creative card. Creative control. Again, how many people are going to do this? Creative control What's card. That time? Yeah, it's the first. Creative control card. So, Booker T, Jeff Jarrett wrestled for the new WCW Championship. Bash at the Beach 2000, Russo, Hogan, and Jarrett, and Booker T. Another great 10 best WCW moments. This week's Fan of the Week is Tim from Connecticut. Tim says, it seems like a foregone conclusion that Matt Hardy is on his way to TNA. Now that Jeff Hardy is associated with the new regime, I think Matt can make an impact by getting involved in that storyline right away. What do you think about the idea of having Gregory Helms, Shannon Moore, and Matt Hardy come in and rally a couple other baby faces to their cause to fight the new regime? Gentlemen, your thoughts. Thank you, Linda. Black. She's not in mourning, is she? She's LBD. Little black, little black dress. There is nothing. You wish you were in her little black book. Ha ha! Yes! Woo! I'm in her little black phone. Uh, yeah. There's nothing hotter than a chick in a little black dress. Nothing? Well, it's a PG show. Come on. Oh, we're not PG. How do you feel about those WWE ads? They're getting a little bit of trouble from the uh, opposing party of Linda McMahon saying it's a bit of a uh, spin campaign by WWE and that Linda's campaign is behind it. You saw it on Raw. You saw it on all the WWE programming this week, a well-put-together piece that's, quite frankly, been on their website, their corporate website, for quite a while. But now they put it on TV. And uh, here's the problem I have with it. We'll get to uh, Tim in a minute, who's from Connecticut, by the way. Uh, but the problem I have with it is they are brainwashing the fans into believing that somebody's saying something bad about the fans, so then all these fans are going to rally and say 
ridiculous stuff involved in the campaign and trying to show their support for WWE. It's a slippery slope, in my opinion. That's exactly what they're doing. Come on. Who... W it could have been the NFL fans. It could have been hockey... Well, there's no hockey fans. It could be baseball fans, basketball fans. But whenever you say something negative about something that you feel passionate about, of course you're going to rally the troops. Yeah. They had to do it. I thought it was a great piece. I it was a great was piece. Very well and I don't done. fault WWE for doing it, by the way, because they really do not get enough credit for the good that they do. But at the same time, David, you've got to say that there is some, some validity to the claims of the company Damian, Linda McMahon ran. It's the wrestling business. Yes. It's all work. Right, but I'm, what I'm saying is there's been a lot of criticism against Linda for the independent contractor situation. There are health care or lack thereof of the talents in WWE and some of the things that they've gotten involved with in the past, investigations and whatnot. That stuff's legit, but this stuff is legit too. So that's why I'm saying it's not a bad thing for WWE to do it. However, it could be a challenge for them to prove that it wasn't Linda McMahon's campaign using this platform to further herself without paying for it. I don't really think I saw anything that tagged Linda on there. You didn't? Yeah. But there is an investigation, a formal investigation well, by the fine. FCC. You know what? You dig deep enough, you're going to find dirt somewhere. Tim you know? wants to well, know. Well, I'm not done with this yet. I don't think they've done anything wrong that way. Yeah, sure, they're going to rally the troops and get them talking about it. But for all we know, it could have been against, uh, what was that name? E, e. Trent Buzzell, whatever that goofball <laughs> T -Boone. was. T-Boone. Pippins? Or? No, no. Remember that uh, TV act, that radical fundamentalist that was totally against the WWE and... Oh, uh, Mushnick. No, E. Trent Pazell, I think. It was, I don't or remember. Whatever. Once again, I remember you're older. Yeah, but, you know... <laughs> well done, peace. And you know what? They should be proud of what they do, and they should show the fans that. Did they air it during NXT when they were crapping all over the business? Who watched NXT? They had about a million people watch uh, okay. the first week it was online only. Okay. That's an accomplishment. But Damien. David. Put it on your main show. It'll be on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll show it on SmackDown. Yeah. Probably right somewhere around the Cody Rhodes segment. Because that's, you know, and, the, and since The Miz is on SmackDown this Friday night as well, it's probably going to be the highest so rated So is the block. Viper Randy Orton. Who? You heard me right. Is it a Randy Orton show or a Hulk Hogan You know what? It's kind of funny because it's almost like... There's all these snakes in wrestling. You've got vipers and pythons They're and all the cobras. Yeah. Tim, sorry about that. We'll get back to your question, which is uh, obviously Matt Hardy released from WWE one week ago today. Actually, uh, two weeks ago today. It was one week ago. No, but in reality, oh, it was two weeks ago. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, the announcement coming last Friday that Matt Hardy had been released, uh, some are saying, as Matt does, Tim did, it is a foregone conclusion that Matt Hardy is going to go to TNA. I would not be surprised to see that happen, but the question he asks is, will it go further than that? Will we see the likes of a Gregory Helms join up with a Shannon Moore and a Matt Hardy and uh, come in to fight the new regime, which includes Matt's brother, Jeff Hardy? No. There's no... There's no money in that. Might they think that there is, though? Depends who's talking to who. But Shannon Moore, he's already in a tag team, Ink Ink. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not too sure if Hurricane Helms is a good fit in TNA right now. It's because of the F-bombs he dropped on the pro wrestling well, no, radio. They show. don't have any superheroes in TNA. I mean, Super Eric and Curry Man and well, I don't Shark think he can Boy, be the Hurricane gone. anymore, can he? It'd be something. <laughs> the typhoon? No, nah, they got that too. Yeah. The tsunami? That's a whole different tsunami. storm type, yes. I understand. Yes. That's, so it's not a storm, it's, but... Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I was talking about Raw, but about storm, but we'll get there later. Matt Hardy to TNA? Yay, nay? Eventually. Days from now? Eventually. Why not? Why of wouldn't he? Why, why wouldn't he? His brother's there. Yeah. Sounds like... I, how do they use them, though? What, how valuable, how can Matt Hardy be used to be valuable to the company? Not just another former WWE guy. It's Matt Hardy. In. It's the Hardy boys. No, I agree, but I'm, that's what I'm asking is, obviously there's value in Matt Hardy. I'm asking, though, how is he valuable in the current landscape of TNA wrestling? If you were bringing him in, how, what would you do with Matt Hardy? I haven't tried to 
talk sense into his brother. Mm. And saying, this isn't what we're about. We're the Hardy Boys, you know, that yeah. whole kind of thing. Built to a match? I would hope not. Really? They haven't had many one-on-one -on -one singles matches. I don't like matches. those kind of matches. Really? I don't like watching tag teams feud with, with each other. You don't like the Royal Rumble when X and Smash and Demolition fall? Well, that was cool because it was a gimmick match. It wasn't like, you know, Gennetti versus Michaels or, or uh, you know, Nightheart versus Bret Hart or Cody versus Ted, you know? Speaking of Nightheart, uh, Lay Cool. Yes. On SmackDown tonight. A little more Nightheart action there on SmackDown. You know, let's talk about how great Raw was this past Monday night. I thought it was one of the best shows they've done in months. It was a great Raw. And it showed me how much better WWE could be if they just simply used the talents on all the shows. I get why they don't. I support their decision not to. But Raw this past Monday night proved, granted some of it was fresh and that was the reason, but proved that they have a deep talent roster. They have deep personalities. And they can use them in a fitting way. Michael Cole was tremendous. Daniel Bryan was tremendous. Vicky Guerrero was tremendous. The Miz was awesome. Cody Rhodes was tremendous. Oh, whoa, whoa. Back up, champ. What did Cody do? He successfully uh, defended his tag team titles. Who got the win? What His tag team partner. What does it matter? Drew McIntyre What does it matter? Uh, Cody did. They're a team. A tag team. Obviously, one guy is still doing all the work in that team. What did you think of Raw Monday Night? Yeah. I liked it. It was entertaining. And like you said, when you have all of the guys from both brands there, it means more. It has that superstar feel. And they even, even with and, Ezekiel Jackson? And they even found room for Ezekiel Jackson, Santino Morella, and Tyler Rex. You know? Are you in the Macarena here? No, it's the Cobra. Fear oh, the Cobra. Gotcha. Um, Tyler Rex, he's got a presence. I just I still well, don't get the hair. You know what? I mean, we talked about this earlier. What I noticed about the Raw team, we'll, we'll talk about that and be the booker. We'll save Thank that. you for that email and fan of the week this week, Tim from Connecticut. And uh, David Hero, as you mentioned, it is time to go to the big board. Go to the tote, if you will. The tote? You ever watch the Jerry Lewis telethon? Let's go to the tote. Oh. Da 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 da. 64 million, whatever. It's time for Be the Booker. Well, David, it's back again. It's Be the Booker. Every Let's talk week. about WWE bragging rights this Sunday night on pay per view. Uh, is, uh, I believe, the second annual bragging rights, where it's obviously headlined by a couple championship matchups and Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. But several other matchups on the card, and we're going to begin by talking about. I, wait, I can what see. What is here. this? This is our, our, our kind of sponsor for, for the week. Stabetha? Yeah, on Twitter. Tabitha. Stabetha. She wanted to be the sponsor of Brett, of Be the Booker. Did you week. run that through the marketing team? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, Stop. it's important to note, is the best bumper in the business. Who says that? Me. Cross your up there. First of all, it's DVD. Daniel, Daniel Bryan Danielson. No, it's Brian Danielson was his old name. Now his name is Daniel but Bryan. But we have rebranded him to the DVD. Why is everything going to be acronyms with you? This makes more sense. It's more fun. Daniel Bryan Danielson versus Dolph Ziggler with, you forgot. I didn't forget. I just don't want to write her name down. Why not? Because you're obviously more fun than I am writing She's a down. cougar. And what's the what, what's her uh, rookie's name that's with her? What does that matter? What's her name? Janice, Jamie. I forgot. Tabitha. I don't know. Okay. Tabitha. No, I don't. Why, we can't watch NXT anymore. We don't have that kind of high speed connection. Yes. <laughs> U.S. versus IC title. Honestly. Neither belt on the line though. What a shame! It should be a unification match. I thought they were going to go there, and maybe they still will come this Sunday on pay per view. Is there anyone cooler than this guy right now? He got to dance with Gail Kim and Eve. You've danced know. with Gail Kim and Eve. You've danced with Gail Kim and I've you? danced with Gail Kim, yes. So. Yes, I have. But still, he did it on national television. 
Can he be serious for a moment? <laughs> How about that? A little tribute Canada. to Lance Storm in Canada? In Canada, absolutely. Great match. This one should open the show. It should steal the show. Both guys are tremendous. I have a funny hunch, though, that Vicky is going to screw things up. And the guy that got his head kicked in by Sheamus is going to walk out the victor, Daniel Bryan Danielson. He needs it more than Ziggler does right now. So that's when Ziggler really got a significant win over anybody. And John Morrison. Or Kofi at the last pay-per-view. He wrestled 28 times in a row. Smackdown Listen, superstars. this guy is money right here. Hey, you can take your best bumper in the world. That's fine. Go ahead. It's going to be a great match. It's going to be You said uh, that the Miz versus Daniel Bryan matchup a couple of months ago was going to be match of the night. Would you... This match is going to be hash mark tremendous. But uh, you got to go with DVD. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I'm down with DVD. All right, I will uh, go ahead and move on to the next matchup, which is for the Divas Championship. I didn't see you pick a winner here. I didn't. I don't have to. You don't have to. You're right. Divas Championship. Lay cool. One half. Layla or Michelle McCool will go up against Natalia. And there's a good chance, David, in my opinion, that Natalia will walk out the Divas Champion. You know what? I would have agreed with you up until Monday Night Raw. Really? Yes. Here's the thing. Ashmark? Who did Natalia kind of chew out Monday night? David Hartsmith? Yes. He kind of screwed up the tag title match, didn't he? Wouldn't it be funny if somehow he comes down and screws up Natalia's match, which then allows Lay Cool to once again cheat to win, or screw job to win, or whatever they do, leave the Divas Champion. Everyone's going to pick Natalia, But with that heart dynasty in such dis disarray, her with the title doesn't help anything. I would agree. Oh, you already picked your winner here, Chad. You can't. No, 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 no. I said many would say that Natalia oh, has a good chance okay. of setting the stage. So you're going to not do that? Sure. Okay. Hey, I'm just checking. Which one, Layla or uh, You know Michelle what, McCool? it doesn't matter. Really? I, I would rather see Layla, mm -hmm. because I think she's hotter. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, let's not forget, her husband is down here, so come on. The World Championship is on the line. It's a Buried Alive match, David Hero, coming off the heels of the matchup last month that they had. Kane defends his World Heavyweight Championship against The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. Paul Bearer obviously aligning himself with Kane. Uh, recently in the Undertaker's match, Buried Alive, the match where Paul Bearer had gotten taken out several years ago. Burned? It, there's only one R. The interns spelled it wrong. I was trying to cover that up before. Oh, okay. Well, it's just all right. erase it. That's fine. I don't have one of those gimmicks. You need a gimmick. Buried Alive matchup. Paul Bearer eliminated a few years ago in a Buried Alive matchup. Kane, with Paul Bearer, defending his title against The Undertaker, who is no longer in that vegetative state. No, he's not. But let's not forget, this guy is still beat up. He's not 100%. He's not even 80%. He might be 65 to 70%. Kane, on the other hand, has Paul Bearer with him. Now, oh, yes! why bring Paul Bearer back for, for two or three shows? I have a hunch, if they want to do business right, Undertaker loses. I want to take your eraser away. Because you can be buried alive. You can't see him anymore. Okay? Kane now beats Undertaker at three straight, three straight pay-per-views. Uh -huh. He's gone. He's going to heal up for a little while. Let him be gone. Let Kane have a run. With? Doesn't matter. Swagger, Big Show. Whoever you want. Edge? Fine. Oh, right. Okay? Let him, let him build up. Who? Cabal, NXT Season 2 winner? Yes. He didn't win. Let Kane have a little bit of a run, get some momentum, and then eventually around Royal Rumble, excuse me, for whom the bell tolls, then he can come back. Notice I used purple this time for The Undertaker. Let him come back at the Rumble, challenge Kane. They may not wrestle each other at WrestleMania, but give Kane some steam. 
right now he doesn't need the belt. Because like I said, he's too beat up. Let Ken run with it, have some fun. Let him go away, heal, bring him back in a couple months, and do it that way. Let Undertaker then win the belt before WrestleMania and headline WrestleMania in possibly his last one. WWE bragging rights this Sunday night on pay-per-view, and uh, that's the way David Hero sees those first few matches going. <laughs> uh, Daniel Bryan defeating Dolph Ziggler. And remember, no titles on the line in that particular matchup. Yeah, however, Dolph Ziggler, the current Intercontinental Champion, and uh, Daniel Bryan is the current United States Champion. Uh, Lay Cool versus Natalia. The Divas Championship is on the line. David Hero sees or would book it so that Lay Cool continues their winning streak and doing it when they couldn't do it each and every month on pay-per-view and retaining those Divas Championships. And will we see some involvement from the Hart Dynasty, either Tyson Kidd or D.H. Smith in that particular matchup? Who knows, especially after what we saw this past Monday night on Raw, that possibility certainly does exist. The SmackDown side of things, the main event on the SmackDown side of things, Kane versus The Undertaker for the World Heavyweight Championship, a buried alive matchup. This concept is always sort of lame in my opinion, but it will be an interesting match to watch because you only lose if you get set up in that tomb or in that grave and buried alive. And uh, the way we see it, the way David Harrell sees it, is Kane winning that matchup, giving The Undertaker an opportunity to take some time away, leading up until potentially January's Royal Rumble, or at some point before WrestleMania in Atlanta, Georgia. And David, the pay-per-view continues with several other big matchups, and it is headlined being bragging rights by the team Raw versus Team SmackDown. We know the captains of those teams, the captain of Team Raw being The Miz, and the captain of Team SmackDown being The Big Show. Let's run down the names of the other participants in that matchup. Joining The Miz on Team Raw is R-Truth, John Morrison, Santino Morello, Sheamus, CM Punk, and a returning Ezekiel Jackson. Big Zeke, part of Team Raw, the red team, if you will, led by The Miz. And you got to sort of wonder what Alex Riley's involvement may or may not be in that matchup as well. Joining the Big Show on the SmackDown side of things, the captain is the Big Show. He is joined by Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, Jack Swagger, Alberto Del Rio, Edge, and Tyler Rex. So, last year, Team SmackDown took home the prize. On Raw, Team SmackDown came out on top. On SmackDown tonight, Team SmackDown comes out on top. What does that mean, David, going into this Sunday's <coughs> bragging rights pay-per-view? Big team on Raw, but a tremendous team over on SmackDown. This is a stud team. Absolutely. Including? <clears throat> uh, they got Santino over here. Kind of washed no, it no. out. They got, you forgot Truth. He's not on that team anymore. Is he gone? Yeah, what did I miss? He's gone. There's only six on six. It's seven on seven. What's One, happening two, over here? Three, four, five, six. Who did I miss over here? Well, you missed uh, Jack Swagger. No, you got Swagger. You got uh, Kingston. You got uh, maybe I did miss something. Oh, yeah, I'm no, sorry. No, wait, I don't Kingston, have see? On here. What's going on? I gave you all that time. You saw me Whoa, stalling, and well, then you're missing people. Then you write them in a different color. It's our truth. truth over here. Truth, yes. Okay. You know, <clears throat> I come here every week. But he wasn't on the stage last night. He wasn't anywhere. He wasn't there on SmackDown tonight either. What's going on with K Quick? Who cares? Well, here's the thing. Hashmark? <clears throat> Hashmark. With the exception of Quick and Santino, this is really old ECW or WWE ECW. Former, you know, stars on, on the ECW brand, the sci fi brand, Miz, Ezekiel Jackson, CM Punk, Jomo, Sheamus, stars on the ECW brand against SmackDown. I thought that brand was dead. Looks like they actually had some stars that came onto there. But I'm going to talk about this match or the or, or the, the title. We're going to start here. I don't know. Is this elimination or I think it is elimination. I believe it is elimination. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Someone gets tricky real fast. It's not that. Final tricky. four. Final four. I'll give you final four. 
Big Show, as well. and Edge. I'll agree with Miz and Sheamus in the Final Four. Jobo getting a lot of focus on Raw this past few weeks. That's fine. He can have all the focus he wants. Alberto Del Rio getting a lot of focus on SmackDown these last few weeks. The good thing about this match, David, I would imagine, is you can build a lot of stuff going forward but this, within the this, team. This here, what is this, the matching game now? It can be. Big Show and Sheamus, that could be, that could be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Edge wants to get his revenge on Miz, doesn't he? Yeah. But unfortunately... When it's all said and done, there's a lot more said than done. I'm going to go with The Miz and Sheamus. Yes. Yes. Team and Team Raw winning it. We're on Team Raw. Really? Absolutely. They got to, really? They have to. They got beat down on Raw, beat down on SmackDown. He's money in the bank. Even Literally. Like, eventually, he's going to cash that in. He's got to get stronger. He's been tapping out to DVD the past few Who weeks. Who remembers that? I do. You gotta make him strong so it's believable when he does cash it in, which won't happen tonight because something else is gonna happen up here. But I like Seamus and Miz to be the winners. And how great would it be? The two guys that a month and a half ago were kind of you know beating each other up and feuding yeah. are gonna win it together. Some good opportunities in this matchup, specifically between Santino. And Del Rio, I think, just from a comedy standpoint. Uh, they could play off it, each other very well. It could well. be great. Some good competitive opportunity with or John even Morrison and, and Big Show. Absolutely. John Morrison and Rey Mysterio. John Morrison and Jack Swagger. Some good athleticism there. John Morrison and Kofi Kingston. We could see a good matchup here in this 7-on-7, seven 14-man seven, total elimination How much matchup. time do they give this match? At least 30. You think at least 30? have to. This is truly, is this not the headlining Match on the card? It should be. I'm going to give it 40 minutes. 40? Well, now you're timing them and everything. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying. You said match. nothing about our truth. No. Do they make a star during this matchup of a Tyler Rex? Of a... Or There's Rex. a lot of pressure on this kid. Who's heard of him before? Right. Now all of a sudden he's in the biggest match of his life. On bragging rights. Ezekiel, he needs some something. Been gone for a oh, long time. He's going to get a huge push. Yeah? Yeah. So they have an opportunity to do that. There's a lot that could happen in this matchup. There's a said. lot, but at the end of the day, Miz and Sheamus. I'm fine with that. The World Wrestling Entertainment Championship will be on the line. Randy Orton going up against Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett in the main event of WWE bragging rights, and his lackey, John Cena, will be at his side. Who would have matchup. thought that Wade Barrett would be headlining and main eventing a WWE pay-per-view? For losing season one? He won season, season two? He won season one. Oh, he did win. I'm sorry. Yeah. I get confused because winners don't matter. No, of course they don't. Not in the rest of the business. You got the rest of Nexus as well that could play yeah, in this Yeah, but match. the focus is going to be this guy right here. John Cena. Um, I think this match has potential of being great. It depends on how well Wade Barrett follows Randy Orton, and if Randy Orton has patience to work with, Rand with Wade Barrett. Stupid, stupid, stupid. What's going to help is he has John Cena out here to kind of carry some of the workload for him. Not in the ring, but he can slow him down, mm -hmm. remind him what to do. It could be fabulous. It could be great. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Uh-oh. I'm even going to... D-double-H this one. Oh, the stamp. The stamp. And your new world champion. Really? Is Wade Barrett. Really? Because he will have no choice but to help him beat Randy Orton. Which then can truly make John Cena a little more heelish. SummerSlam Heart and Soul 1997 when Shawn Michaels had no choice but to count Undertaker's shoulders down for Bret Hart to become the new WWE champion. Mm -hmm. Cena will have no choice but to help Wade Barrett defeat Randy Orton to become the champion down the road. If he doesn't, he's fired. And, you know... So you're saying they're going to cheat? He's going to be forced to do something he doesn't want to do. And that's going to be make Wade Barrett the WWE world champion. What does that mean for Randy Orton? 
Just means he's going to chase him now for a little while. He's going to be, he's going to be chasing John Cena, too. He'll be chasing both of them. And then on Monday night, this guy finally comes up with a Nexus shirt on. David Otunga. So a little bit of dissension being teased there. He's upset because his team doesn't match. Could he play a negative role in this matchup? No. 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 It's all going to be the swerve. This is the angle. Cena's. You've stamped this. I sta it's, it's stamped. I'm not saying it makes no sense. I'm just saying that's a pretty bold step. But well, you know what? I'm not predicting it. I'm saying this is how it should be. But, I mean, I'd be happy to see this happen. This is how I feel about it. I mean, really, what good does it do Wade Baird for Randy Orton to beat him? But that could happen with the whole Cena thing and really not... If Cena costs him the match... What if he does it inadvertently? What if he does it by mistake? It doesn't matter. He needs to be champ. It gets more heat on Cena. It gets more heat on Barrett. Randy Orton can then chase for a little while. Randy Orton just won, what, two months ago? doesn't make a difference. Kevin Nash beat Goldberg on a Sunday and lost to Hogan on a Monday. Finger poke. Doom. And King beat Austin. First blood match. Lost it the next night. Nobody remembers that. I do. You don't like it, do you? No, I, I'm just I'm trying to absorb it here. Trying to be like a bounty towel and soak it all up here. Makes sense. Makes sense. But will they do it? Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, would, would, would you be disappointed if Wade Barrett won? No, not at all. Not at all. How great would that be? It then validates Nexus. It makes him stronger. Mm -hmm. Because of Cena. Because of Cena. WWE bragging rights this Sunday night on pay-per-view. We'll be tweeting during the show and having updates at pwrshow.com during the show as well. And uh, you can catch the second half of that interview with Kurt Angle, best wrestler in the world today. Kurt Angle coming up this week on our ESPN radio show. Check the website. Uh, pwrshow.com for all the information on that. And David Hurl, this Tuesday night, we're going to be at Smacky Wacky. Smackdown! Here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Rock Show, baby! The Blue Show. It's not blue. The theme is blue. Oh, I, okay, I thought you meant as in funny haha blue. For David Hurl, the cause, Linda Kay, and the man they call Meathead, this is Damian Nelson saying thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next week with another new edition of the Pro Wrestling Report, Primetime TV.